All right, guys, so this is something that every fisherman needs to learn at some point, preferably in the beginning of their fishing career. And really, there's only two ways to learn it. One way is to learn the hard way by trying <coughs> more than fishing, or you can do some research and prevent yourself and the fish any harm in advance. So that's what I'm gonna go through today in today's video. I'm just gonna show you guys how to handle fish properly and for the best safety of you and the fish. So full disclosure, I'm only gonna go through specific fish that are native or that you can catch here on the west coast. But the good thing is here on the west coast is we have a wide variety of fish species. And I gotta believe that anywhere you live, you'll be able to apply one of these fish species to the fish where you live. So basically we gotta keep two things in mind when we're handling fish. Number one priority, is the safety of you, the angler. Because you don't want to get pricked by a venomous fish, you don't want to get uh, bit by a shark, etc. So that's the first thing we have to keep in mind. And second, especially if you're gonna be practicing catch and release, we want to make sure we keep the fish's safety in mind because obviously catch and release is nothing if you're releasing a dead fish. So that's the second priority. So there's a few things that you're gonna to want to keep in mind to optimize the health of that fish and optimize the chances that that fish is gonna survive and swim off healthy. So the first thing is the less time out of the water, the better. And this is pretty obvious. For example, humans, the longer they are underwater, the less chances they have to survive. Same thing with fish. The longer they are out of the water, the less chances they, are, they have to survive. And few fi some fish are able to last longer out of the water, and I'll go through that later in the video. Some fish here on the west coast, for example, we have sturgeon, and oversized sturgeon you're not allowed to take out of the water, and for good reason, because they're body mat, their body structure is not designed to carry their kind of weight out of the water. Um, gravity just doesn't go well with their system. So for that reason, oversized surgeon, they're not allowed to take out of the water at all. But uh, like I said, in general, most fish you can take out of the water. If you're ever in doubt, it's always good to check your local regulations. Number two, for the health of the fish, it's always good to keep your hands wet. And all fish, I don't know if all fish, most fish, I'd say probably 99% of them, have a protective slime coating on the outside of their scales. And in order to keep that slime coating on, you don't wanna be using gloves, you don't wanna be have dry hands, you don't wanna be using a towel, because all those things will just suck that slime, that protective slime right off of the fish. And uh, obviously, the more slime you take off of that fish, the more harm you're gonna be doing to it, and the less chance it has to survive. And the last thing, is you wanna watch out for the fish's gills. And a fish's gills is basically the equivalent of lungs for humans. It's where the oxygen from the water uh, enters the oxygen in their bloodstream. So basically there's a lot of blood flowing in and out of those gills. So any puncture, any scrape to those gills is gonna cause that fish a lot of bleeding. And basically any kind of damage to those gills is pretty much fatal to any kind of fish. So those are the basically the most vital organ that's open and that you're able to touch with your own hands and that's the one main thing you wanna watch out for. So with that being said, we'll go through all the species specific fish handling details. So if you clicked on this video to see a certain species in particular, I'll leave a list here of all the species that I'm going through and the timestamp that you wanna to skip to to see that species. So if you're here for some species in particular, check out that timestamp uh, and you can skip all this other nonsense that I'm gonna go through. So the first category I'm gonna go through is panfish. And basically, in terms of freshwater fish, it's gonna encompass bluegill, pumpkin seed, crappie, uh, we've got freshwater perch, all those are considered panfish. And then the ocean, I'm also gonna include surf perch. So basically, they got the same kind of body style, similar kind of characteristics as those freshwater panfish. So those are all gonna be encompassed in this category. They don't have big teeth. You know, you don't have to watch out for any big molar incisors. They're not gonna chomp on your fingers or anything. But they do have sharp spines on their top dorsal fin. And uh, I'll use this little cutting board. It's like my visual aid. But basically this fin right here, on panfish, this is like their biggest line of defense. They got spikes on all the way down and some on the bottom as well. So the main thing you wanna watch out for are those spines. So the best way to grab a perch, a crappie, a bluegill, is you wanna start from the head and run your fingers down towards the middle of the body until you can get a good grab on the, good grasp of the fish. And uh, that'll prevent, it'll knock all those spines down, 
It will prevent any of those spines from poking you in the fingers. If you ever run your hand backwards up towards the head, that's when you're going to get in trouble. That's when those spines are going to start poking you on that dorsal fin. And uh, as long as you're going down this way towards the tail, you'll be just fine. No pokes in the fingers and you'll be able to release that fish healthy and your hand won't be damaged at all. Okay, number two. We got trout and salmon. I'm gonna put those all in the same category. They're basically the same fish. Trout are freshwater, salmon are saltwater, and freshwater. And uh, I guess we can group in steelhead to this category as well. I've never actually caught, well, I'll take that back. I've caught a few steelhead only by accident and none of them have been on YouTube. So we'll just say for purposes of this video, I've never caught a steelhead, um, but these fish are extremely fragile. So if you are practicing catch and release, these are the kind of fishes you need to be extremely careful with uh, when you're handling them. And the best way to release any of these fish, if uh, it's too small, it's undersized, or it's a bycatch, you're not even trying to catch them, and you just want to get them out, get them off your hook, and get them back in the water as quick as possible. The best way to do it is to reel them up, bring them on the side of your boat, kayak, or if you're on the bank, keep it over the water, and just unhook it there. You don't have to touch the fish. The fish doesn't touch your boat. There's no nets or anything involved. And uh, that's the, uh, gonna be the best way to release that fish. However, I know that there's also times when you're not able to do that. Maybe you're wanting to get a picture of that fish really quick. Maybe it's a borderline fish. You know, it's right up to the minimum size requirements and you need to get a measure on it to see if you're able to keep it. And uh, in that case, it's best to use a net. And actually here in California, it's actually required that you carry a net on board for, with a certain diameter. Um, just for this reason, to keep that, fish as he keep that fish as healthy as possible. So the best thing to do is to net it, keep the frame of the net above the water so it's not able to bounce right out, but enough, keep it close enough to the water where that fish is still in the water, still able to get oxygen through its gills, uh, and it'll be just a lot more healthy in the water. You can give it a quick measure there. If you have to take it out of the water to get a measure, do it as quickly as possible, and then if it's keeper, boom, throw it in the ice chest. If it's not, then you can get it back in the water as quickly as possible. If you want to take a picture, bring it out of the water real quick, get a picture as quickly as possible, and then dump it right back in the water, uh, and that fish will be just fine. Like I said, these are the most fragile fish, so these are the ones that the mortality rate, I would assume, is probably the highest out of any fish that you're gonna catch or release, so take good care when you're, when you're catching these fish. Okay, the next one is crabs. And here on the west coast, we got rock crab, we got Dungeness crab, and those are basically the main targets here. They're not even really fish, so I don't know if I can put them in this video, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So obviously crabs, you know, they're not fluid, you know, they got thick, or they got um, solid exoskeletons, I guess you can call them. I don't know what the proper term is, but anyway, they're only gonna be moving one way, so avoiding those pinchers is not too difficult. You just need to know where to grab them. So some people like to grab the, fit the crab, if, you, if this is the crab shell, they like to put one hand on top, one hand on bottom, and that's pretty good. I find that most crabs are not able to reach around and get you underneath, or even on top, there's no way they'll get you on top. But every once in a while, I will see crabs with just enough flexibility to get that pincher on the bottom, and they could potentially get your thumb there. And uh, I find that the best way to avoid all claws, it's basically foolproof, is to grab those back two legs with your fingers like this. You can hold it, measure it, no problems. That crab, there's no way those claws are gonna be able to get around to get you. And uh, you'll be just fine, the crab will be fine. It's undersized, you can toss it right back, no problems. We'll take a brief moment so you can watch Olaf in his natural habitat here sleeping on the couch. Okay, back to the show. Okay, our next species are ray and sharks. I'm gonna cat group these together because a lot of times they're grouped together and I just find it to be convenient for this video. So here on the west coast, there's two common rays, the stingray and then there's a thornback ray. And we do have other species, but those are a little bit less common. Um, I don't have as much experience with those, but basically on the stingrays, you wanna watch out for the stinger and the thornback ray, you wanna watch out for, that, for those thorns on the back, hence the name, the thornback ray. Um, both of them, the stinger and the thorn, are on the tails. So the tail is the main thing you want to watch out for. So as long as those rays are not giant, you know, they're not 100 pound rays, I find that you can stick their hand in the mouth. Um, you don't want to like lift them too heavily. You just still want to be careful with them because they're pretty dense creatures. You know, they're pretty heavy. 
and uh, holding it by that mouth could be a little stressful. So holding it by the mouth, you can just slide it back into the water. Um, I guess rays are pretty much the one species where it's kind of tricky. I mean, there's not really a good way to hold it. But basically, you just watch out for that stinger, and as long as you stay on the bottom of the fish, they're not going to be able to get you, and just shimmy your way, shimmy that ray back into the water. And then sharks, everyone knows sharks, they got teeth. So those are the, that's the one thing you want to watch out for sharks. The nice thing about sharks is they have really sandpaper-like skin, so they're not slimy. You don't have to worry about them slipping out of your hands. Um, the one thing that I have noticed is there are some sharks, actually most sharks, are flexible enough to where they can whip around and even bite their tail. So grabbing it by the tail or right above the tail, you're not always safe there. So I find that the best way is to get one hand around the tail like so, and then put another hand up here towards the mouth is that's gonna keep that mouth away from the tail, won't get back and bite you. And also it's gonna support the fish a lot better. It's gonna, won't be too much stress on the back tail here on the spine and uh, that'll get that fish back in the water. So our next category is bass and we're gonna focus on freshwater bass. So we got largemouth bass, spotted bass, uh, smallmouth bass, etc., etc. So these are pretty much the most common species on YouTube. So if you've watched any kind of fishing video on YouTube, you've probably seen someone catch a bass at some point. So the best way to hold these is basically just to get your thumb in there and hold that bottom jaw. And basically you want to hold them as much upright in a vertical position as possible. Anytime you try and turn it where it's a little more parallel to the ground, especially if it's a larger fish, that's when you have potential to break that jaw of the fish. So if you want to turn it for a picture, make sure you get that second hand in there and give it a little more support on the back end or under the belly just to prevent that jaw from getting too much stress on it. Okay, so this is a fish stripper. And this is good to help you handle any kind of fish, especially those bigger ones that are hard to handle. And you can just stick that in the mouth like so and then grip it down and then you can get a good grip. You can hold, use this to hold the fish rather than the actual fish itself. Okay, the next category is rockfish. And what I mean by rockfish is here on the west coast, any kind of species, we have blue rockfish, there's probably close to a hundred different species of rockfish. We've got vermilions. If you're a viewer of my channel, you've seen plenty of them uh, that I've caught. You can catch it from the shore, you can catch it from a boat, you can catch it from a kayak, and uh, they're pretty abundant here on the west coast. And, and I'm going to group that in with striped bass, which I think they are called rockfish on the east coast, not too sure on that. but. I'm going to group those together because they have pretty similar body structures. And similar to panfish, they have that big spine on, on the dorsal fin. So th that's the main thing you want to watch out for. And then also on the gill plate, they have sharp spikes and just a, a sharp piece there that can you can easily get cut by if you're not careful. The easiest way to hold these fish, especially the smaller ones, is just to grip it like a, any other largemouth bass or smallmouth bass. Get your finger under the, in the mouth, grip it by that bottom jaw, and if it's a little bit bigger fish, you can support with the other hand. You just want to be careful that you don't get stabbed by the spikes. They do have spikes on the anal fin as well. And uh, just make sure you're supporting that fish, especially if it's a bigger one, um, so that it doesn't hurt the jaw on the fish. Also, especially for rockfish, a lot of rockfish species are venomous. So just another reason why you don't want to get poked by those. It's definitely not going to kill you but it will sting for a little while. So especially just avoid those spikes. And like I said before, if you need help, especially with Zerger fish, this fish gripper um, will definitely help you. I'll leave this link in the description below if you want to get one of these. Highly recommend it. It's just really useful tool to have in your arsenal just to control those larger fish. Quick change of scenery. Olaf is getting restless, I had to take him out for a walk. The last category is toothy fish. So these are the fish where that fish gripper is really gonna come in handy because you can get that in the mouth without getting bitten up by the fish. But here on the west coast, those kind of fish include halibut, a really sharp teeth, and ling cod. We're probably the toothiest fish out here on the west coast. So I'll start with ling cod. So ling cod, if you're catching the keep, it really doesn't matter about the fish's health as much, it's more about your own health. So using that fish gripper in the mouth, even if you don't have the fish gripper, you can grab it inside the gills, and uh, that'll give you a good hold. As long as you don't stick your fingers too far up in the gills, then you'll be good, you'll avoid all those teeth, uh, and you can handle that fish without too, much problem, too many problems. As far as halibut go, 
They're a little bit trickier fish. If you ever seen a flounder or a halibut, they're kind of a weird looking fish compared to other fish, so a little bit trickier to handle. Again, if you don't have the fish grippers, you can stick your fingers in those gills, but if you're releasing the fish, you wanna make sure that you don't rub up against the actual gills itself. You just wanna get inside the gill plate, and uh, like I said, rubbing up against those gills causes the fish a lot more harm than it needs to be. So, halibut are pretty hardy fish, but you do wanna watch out for the actual gills themselves. If you're keeping the fish, just stick your fingers in there, either get the, the fish grippers or just stick your hand in that, in that gill plate and then you can get your second hand maybe down along the tail maybe a little bit more and uh, that will allow you to control that fish and uh, if you're keeping it, you really want to put it out, put it out as quickly as possible. It's a little bit pretty strong fish, they can flop around and uh, it's better for the fish, more humane I think if you, you kill it as quickly as possible. So that's about it for this video. If you guys have stuck with it until now, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about catching all of these types of fish that I listed, I just updated all the playlists, playlists on my channel and I'll leave them linked in the description below. I have playlists for each different species of fish here on the west coast. So uh, still looking to catch a few more that I haven't got yet on this channel, but for the most part I've caught almost all the different kinds of species we have here on the West Coast So check that out and if you're interested in getting the fish gripper that I mentioned earlier I'll leave that linked in the description below basically the two items that are, are really essential to catching and releasing safely are that fish gripper and a nice set of pliers pliers will allow you to get that hook out as quickly as possible as safe as possible and uh, I'll leave those two linked in the description below but other than that if you guys have any questions leave a comment below uh, any other species that I didn't cover I'll do my best to answer it and if you guys have any other how-to video suggestions that you want to see on the channel leave that in the comment below this one was actually suggested by uh, one of my Facebook followers I think his name is Rusty Squire so shout out to him for this suggestion and uh, like I said if you have any other questions comments leave them down below and I'll check them out thank you guys for watching we'll catch you next time